Police chase ends with a deadly wrong way crash. It's the second time in 72 hours. Police pursuits end with people losing their lives. Thanks for joining us for the news at 11 o'clock. I'm Chris Fry. These deadly outcomes are not going unnoticed by city leaders. Kelly Kennedy now live with a story you'll see on just one station. And Kelly, you talk to the parents of this young woman who amazingly survived that head on crash. Chris, I did, and this whole thing is just so sad for all involved. And we do hear about this pretty often. A police pursuit in the suburbs ends with a crash here in Cleveland. And that's why members of Cleveland City Council want to meet with Parma City leaders as well as leaders from other suburbs to try to come up with a plan to prevent future tragedies. 19-year-old Asanje Goodman is lucky to be alive. I'm like, is my daughter okay? She just said no. Uh, her car was on fire. We had to pull her out. She's alert. She's talking, she gave me your number and everything. Um, and then the uh, EMT got on the phone and said, you know, there's no life threatening. Uh, life threatening injuries. The Baldwin Wallace Jr.'s parents, Tamika and Kelvin Houston, still tearing up when they think back to Saturday night. She has flashbacks, she thought she was gonna die. Their daughter was headed to the store when a wrong way driver crashed into her car on the Jennings Freeway. Video from ODOT shows the car driving into oncoming traffic just past the Denison exit, hitting Goodman's car head on. The two people in the wrong way car died. So did Goodman's beloved dog, 11 year old Cece. Her jaw is fractured. Her jaw has to be wired shut. She has a fracture in her lower back. Uh, both her ankles are broken. Uh, her ribs are broken, uh, face lacerations, ribs, teeth. teeth are broken. Uh, she's pretty beat up. Parma police tell me they were chasing the driver because he was involved in a hit and run crash. It just, it doesn't make sense for a property crime. It does not make sense to tra chase somebody through the streets like they had murdered somebody or they kidnapped someone. Two days before, another Parma police chase ended in a deadly crash in Cleveland. This time, police were chasing a man who was driving close to 100 miles per hour. Police say they lost sight of the speeding car before it crashed on Woburn Avenue. The 30-year-old driver died and a 40-year-old woman was hurt. Parma police tell me none of the cars involved in either crash were stolen. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to chase somebody. Because no matter what, they're thinking, if they're doing something criminally, they're thinking criminally about trying to get away. When deciding whether to pursue a criminal, Parma police officers are told to consider the seriousness of the offense. If the offender could be identified later, traffic and road conditions, and how reckless the offender is driving. Cleveland police can pursue a driver if they've committed a violent felony, they're driving under the influence, or if the suspect remaining at large is more dangerous to the public than the chase itself. Cleveland City Council members want Parma to review their chase policy. Councilman Chris Harsh says the meeting needs to happen right away. I'm not entirely convinced that Parma did anything wrong, to be honest, but I do think we need to have a conversation about what warrants a chase. Now, some Cleveland council members have suggested having Cleveland police helicopters available on demand to limit these pursuits. Now, Goodman's parents says she's tough and they have no doubt that she's going to make a full recovery, but she still has several surgeries ahead of her, including one coming up later on this week. Reporting live in Cleveland, Kelly Kennedy, 19 News.